Welcome to another How To ADU. Today, in this video, we've got an expert contractor on who's going to explain how you could go all electric, how that might be the same cost as any other setup for your ADU, and how in the long term, that's going to make your ADU more efficient and, and save you money starting immediately and probably save you even more money 10 years from now when, when energy costs have gone up. And we're going to go through exactly the three kinds of appliances and changes that you might be able to make in order to go all electric and how you go through all that. The guest contractor, Rolf Bell from Green Living Builders. He's a third generation contractor who uh, is, is a part of a lot of different ADU task forces and groups, ADU advocates. He does a lot of different types of building, but that passion about ADUs is how we cross paths. And uh, he said, man, I've just finished so many of these all electric ADUs. I want to spread some more information about that. And I, I said, well, hey, I've got, I've got a group of people who keep asking me about electric and whether they need gas in their ADUs. And I don't know a heat pump from a sump pump. So <laughs> let, me, let me put a, a real expert on the, on the channel. And uh, with that, Rolf, can you talk to us a little bit about all electric ADUs? Uh, absolutely. It's a pleasure being with you, Ryan, and uh, I look forward to this conversation uh, and jump in at any time if I, if you need, if I start doing the construction speak and, and, and need to just be more down to earth. But uh, uh, no, it, it's been a, a joy to be part of the, the ADU movement uh, because it's, you know, as we all know, especially in the West Coast, but throughout the country, we have such a housing crisis. And, and if you follow the demographics of, of, of um, people living in in households, the, uh, uh, if you look at 2030, you know another uh, almost another decade out, uh, we're going to be down to you know le less than two people per per household, and to downsize smartly uh, instead of overbuilding is is a is just the right way to go as we look at at uh, uh, an aging population and and. Uh, more people living singly by themselves. It's just a very smart way to, to uh, overcome our housing crisis and, and build more economically. Uh, on the West Coast and in different parts of the country, uh, building smartly with, with energy efficiency is a really big deal. Uh, we have some very strict um, environmental goals out here to become net, net, net uh, neutral as an as a entire state of 30, almost 40 million people. And uh, we have to be pretty aggressive and smart about uh, making the changes that that allow that to occur. Uh, everything from the, you know the electric car movement to wind and solar, uh, much more cleaner forms of of uh, of uh, energy than than what we you know grew up with uh, you know gas and and um, natural gas as as our, our as our primary uh, uh, ways that that kind of propelled our lifestyle. Uh, but but there's really you know dynamic alternatives and the ADU opportunity allows us to really lean into that smartly. Um, so there are ways uh, to e effectively uh, make an, the, an, an ADU entirely electric so that we can eliminate the cost of extending a gas line. And that tends to be a big deal because usually when you extend a gas line, you also have to upsize it. So that means uh, not just making it longer, but making it larger. So that typically would mean you'd have to go all the way back to your meter and upsize, especially if you were considering uh, uh, the, the idea of using a um, tankless water heater, which uh, has a higher volume of gas requirements than, than a standard water heater. Some people just a couple of years ago were thinking, I'm gonna go tankless, that's gonna be the right thing, right thing to do. Well, in this day and age, when you really wanna go clean and quite frankly, have long-term economic uh, incentives in, in play, you really wanna go all electric and this is how you do it. You, uh, the, the, the heat pump phenomena um, means that a, um, a water heater uh, and or your um, uh, heat uh, furnace, uh, heat and, and cooling can all be done with a heat pump. And what a heat pump does is, is uh, lower our energy use by two thirds. It's a much more efficient way uh, to, to generate both heating and cooling 
uh, both for water and for for our uh, atmosphere environment. And, and so that's a big deal, uh, two thirds savings right off the top. Uh, and, and those items tend to be fairly comparable because again, you're saving significant amount of money not upsizing that gas line. So you, uh, uh, with, without that comparison, the, the heat pump, adding a mini split heat pump uh, is, is typically more expensive, but when you, when you, when you add in the cost of, of saving on, on not having to run that larger gas line back to your ADU, it comes out pretty even. And then the long-term energy savings really adds up in terms of real economic dollars and you know a smarter environment, so it's a it's a smart thing to do. What what the the, the downside of a electric heat pump water heater is simply its size. Uh, they're not currently made to be outside like like you can make a tankless a tankless hot water heater that was formerly run on, off of uh, gas could either be internal or external in a small building. And but we are um, stuck with needing a a, a water heater closet. Uh, that needs to be roughly 26 inches by 26 inches. And that doesn't sound like much, but in an ADU, every square foot is valuable in terms of, you know, where is it gonna, where it's gonna be our closet space? Are we gonna have a loft or not? Uh, uh, and so it, it ends up being, you know, a, a big deal carving out that little closet somewhere. Uh, typically we like having those closets face to the uh, outside because the, the heat pumps add a little bit of noise to your environment if they're uh, uh, generating that inside, fairly similar to a, to a tankless as well. They're about the same in terms of their, their, their uh, uh, level of noise that they, that they provide in the, in the environment. So it's smarter to have that little closet on the back wall or, the, or side wall of an ADU uh, where you just have access to that, that water heater. It's roughly, you know, the same diameter as a traditional water heater. It just tends to be taller because the heat pump uh, sits on top. It's another probably 12 to 15 inches uh, higher up uh, than, than uh, a standard water heater. And they don't currently yet make a model that's kind of compacted and squished down uh, so that you could, you know, sneak it into a little corner of an attic or whatever. So that's, uh, I think that's gonna come uh, because because of the ADU phenomena in, in California, um, making it so easy to build ADUs now that, that uh, there's gonna be a, a much larger market for, for these uh, heat pump water heaters. And as a consequence, I think uh, that the companies are gonna start figuring out how to, how to make them more smaller and compact, but, but currently they don't exist. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to like translate that into like Ryan Simpleton stuff, right? And you and you stop me when I get stuff wrong. So if somebody's if somebody's considering, especially on a detached, where they're they're ha gonna have to run a big gas line to the to the new unit, and you're saying on top of running the line, they might have to ex expand the line, and that goes all the way back to the start of the line. Yeah, uh, that's a big cost. They they might save money or at least have comparable costs for installation, just not doing gas at all to the detached and going all electric. And the thing that makes that possible, because there's electric water heaters too, th that aren't these, these uh, mini split heat pumps, but the mini split heat pump is so much more efficient that that makes it really feasible. Right, I mean, the, the, the cost tends to be fairly close to the same for, for the actual purchase and installation. But the long-term cost gain or savings, I should say, with, with, with the uh, heat pump water heater and the heat pump uh, mini split, which is your, your furnace air conditioning, is the long-term energy cost you're saving, you know, two thirds of that cost. And, and if, especially if you live in the West Coast in California, um, you know, we have a couple of our utilities that are in financial crisis. So, you know, they're going to be pushing for, you know, a 10% increase year over year over year. So in, in seven years, a 10% increase means your energy costs will double in seven years in this state. Whereas if you're coming in already at, at, at the beginning with uh, a two thirds savings, it really becomes real money, you know, uh, uh, seven years from now, uh, it, uh, if you're saving you know, $100 now, you're saving, you know, $200 a month um, mm -hmm. uh, just down the road. So that's, that's, 
keep peace. And and then um, what do you what do you think about? Because a lot of times I talk to people about all electric, they're going to say like, yeah, but do I get like my oven? My kitchen's going to be all electric. Is the technology really there for that? Like they think like 1950s bewitched stove or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that, that's the that's the uh, piece that most people are not um, uh, apprised of is is also the revolutionary um, change in in electric stoves. You know, we we all kind of think of, you know, somewhere in our, our past was probably, you know, a bad apartment with a with the old coil uh, um, uh, electric uh, stoves that that took forever, cooked cooked unevenly, and we hated them. And so we all eventually when we could, you know, uh, changed over to gas. The 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 big surprise is that with induction Stoves, induction heat. It's an a form of electric heat. It is, it it's it's superior to gas stoves on multiple levels. Uh, not only does it heat faster, uh, it also heats to, to a more exact temperature than than what gas is, uh, as well as being about about 24, 25 percent more efficient. Uh, so you're saving energy there. The transfer from pot to uh, from stove to pot is about 24% more efficient on induction versus gas. And then you have, you know, the, the, the residual of carbon monoxide also goes away. So it, 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 uh, it beats it on energy savings. It beats it on, on, on speed. It beats it on uh, temperature control and it beats it on, on uh, your own uh, uh, negative indoor air quality doesn't does not suffer with induction. So it's it's uh, people really need to to have an opportunity to to find a neighbor or a friend that has an induction stove, ask them about it, uh, that, uh, who's done the switch from from gas to induction, and 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 maybe even make their own recipe on it. You have to adjust a little bit because it cooks faster, so you 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 can cook things at a lower temperature. Uh, uh, so there is some adjustment because it, it's just more efficient and faster all the way around. Uh, so if you're doing a, you know, a, a slow sauce, you need to probably drop that temperature by another 35 degrees or more. Uh, so there's there's that that little mini learning curve. But most of the people I know that have made the switch are are very happy that they did. And then the, and then the, the last side piece of induction is that. It, it stays cool. You can put your hand on that stove top and you don't get burned. And so if you're living with someone, whether it's a, a small child or a, an Alzheimer's parent uh, or the, either one's ar around, you, you also lower the potential of a fire or a burn with an induction stove as well. So it's re quite remarkable how many, at how many different levels it beats a gas stove. Good to hear. Good to hear. All right, uh, let's talk about drawbacks because I think if you if you're using a lot more electricity because you've gone all electric and you're running off the same electric panel as the house, sometimes that means an upgrade, right? Like what and what does what should homeowners expect in terms of costs and how do they how do they calculate whether they'll need an upgrade? All that stuff. Yeah, yeah. That that's where there's a little bit of a of a shock and learning curve as well. Uh, Think, think of an ADU as a smaller house in the backyard or underneath your house or a carve out or whatever. You think of the ADU as you know, the, 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 the cottage. And, and yet when you go all, all electric, you often need more energy for that small house than you did than uh, electric energy than, than you do for the large house. So people are quite surprised that, oh, you know, I have a hundred, amp panel 125 amp panel on my house what am i what am i going to need for the adu you you typically are going to want a 200 amp panel for that little little uh adu so it almost seems counterintuitive why do i have such a larger how do i have such a larger panel and 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 save money on energy use simultaneously and and you know the uh, your gas bill goes away on the ADU. That's one of the ways you, you save. But, but you, you, um, uh, nine times out of 10, there's a few, uh, we recommend putting in a, a 200 amp panel just on the ADU. And, and the last thing that gets added into that, the future equation for all of us 
is is why uh, there's you know one more piece we haven't talked about, and that's the potential of a future electric car. And if you if you uh, that's you know wh whether you're there or not, I mean I'm I have a really fun time driving my Tesla, but uh, um, um, whether you're there or not, it's coming. And and uh, once you're in the seat of an electric car that that uh, that has some of the features that you know, a, a mid-range Tesla has that I was able to purchase. It's it's hard to go back to, to gas. There's there's such a kick in the pants fun cars, but the but the but the bigger piece of that is 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 that it's it's saving the planet and 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 the the future generations air quality uh, as well. So it's 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 a it's something to consider. And so if you're so if you want a house that that is is either in, in two years or four years or six years, uh, capable of, of charging uh, 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 an electric car, not over a couple of hours, uh, not over, that doesn't take all night, but only takes a couple of hours, you really want to put in at least a 60 amp charger. And uh, you add that to, to your induction stove, your, your mini split en energy needs. Um, your dryer, if, if if there's a you know laundry uh, closet in that ADU, and you're quickly up above the 125 amp panel range, and it just makes sense when you consider the possibility of of wanting to to charge an electric car to put a 200 amp panel on that ADU. And it, it, let's say just because a lot of people out there are like Ryan, I'm I'm not buying a Tesla tomorrow. <laughs> I'll worry about that 10 years from now when there's an affordable car. Uh, th then. Um, still, still advocating for 200 amp, uh, right? Because while they're installing an upgraded panel, the difference between 125 and 200, like, what's that look like? Yeah, yeah. If 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 you kind of if you kind of add to your house incrementally, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll upgrade just enough to where I am now, um, and then at a later date, maybe consider upgrading again. You're you're nearly doubling your cost. Uh, if you go from a 125 amp panel to a 200 amp panel now, you're incrementally uh, uh, adding. You know, uh, you know, probably it's probably another eight hundred dollars because everything has to be bigger. So it sounds like it's real money, but in, in the in the larger picture, if you ever have to upgrade a second time, it's going to be thousands and thousands of dollars. So in the in the bigger scheme of things, this is the time to. To, to be ready for an all electric future because ultimately it's going to give you cleaner energy and lower cost of energy. That's it. If you look at how many things we plug in these days that we didn't have to plug in <laughs> when we were growing up, I, I think everybody knows there's going to be more plugs, not fewer, right? And then side note, I, I missed an opportunity to say, if you ever want me to um, test your induction oven or your Tesla, I am, I am game to travel down to Berkeley. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that's a, so while I'm talking about where you're located, you know, it, you're, you're in the East Bay, uh, you're in, and you're, you're a contractor available. If people want to contact you, I'll put the information down in the description below. Um, is all of this stuff true across the state? Or does it, does it behave differently in Southern California or in out, other states other than California? Yeah, the, the, I mean, in, in, as of January 1, 2020, um, you know, the ADU laws uh, affected every single, mun single municipality in the state. You can now build ADUs and no one can stop you in just about every single uh, property, even in HOAs, you, you, you're, given, you're, you're given a path forward to do it. You have to go through a couple HOA hearings and steps, but you, you can still do it, whereas in 2019, you, you were often blocked by HOA uh, uh, association laws or uh, regulations. But um, simultaneously, uh, on that same date, January 1, 2020, was, was the energy code revision that's trying to get us to a net, net zero future uh, that, that is re requiring all new construction to be um, net zero construction. So it's so whatever your energy use is now, before you build that ADU, when you're done with that ADU, you they don't want your energy to go use to go any higher. And 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 the combination of using the appliances we're talking about, as well as then looking for the opportunity either on your main house uh, 
or your ADU to add solar is, is, is the last critical piece of that equation. And most people think, wow, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of spending quite a few, you know, quite a bit of money on an ADU. Um, I'm just going to run out of money. I should, you know, maybe later I can add solar. Well, you need to really do the math because adding solar now is the same thing is that, is that it doesn't, it doesn't cost you even the capital expense of, 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 of solar on, on the, the main house or the um, ADU. There are ways to make that cost of, of installation and then cheaper energy use uh, to amortize those so that it, it, it immediately pays for itself. Uh, for example, in my own house, uh, a few years ago, our, our electric bill was running uh, about 165 a month. Uh, we switched to throwing 15 uh, panels on our house that covers all of our, our electric, uh, electric use in this house and, and took out a loan to pay for the solar. We now pay $104 a month for the solar bill and have no, no electric bill. And, and uh, uh, that was you know, three or four years ago, probably our electric bill by now would be 185. So we, we already have a gain immediately of $85 a month from making that switch. So we just took out, there's low interest loans for solar. There's some great credits for solar. And if you do the math and, and take what you're currently spending uh, on your utility bill and convert that to, to what you'd be uh, paying for a, for a solar payment, you come out ahead. And, and, and guess what? In, in 10 years, I will have paid that off and my solar's typically good, good. Those panels are typically, typically good for 25 years. So I'm going to have 15 years of completely free energy while, while your energy costs are doubling or tripling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I'm, I've got a couple like oddly specific questions. Like, so, so a, a lot of the time when people hear mini split, they're like, wait, I thought that was the new way to do air conditioning and heating. You're telling me it's water heater too. Is that the same device or is it just two no, different things that use the same uh, technology. I, I confused you a bit that what, what both technologies use is, is a heat pump. So mini spit is a heat pump based and a hot water heater that, that is a heat pump based or is technology in both those areas, whether it's, whether it's uh, conditioning your air or conditioning your water, they save two thirds on your energy costs. So, so mini split is, is a, yeah, there's 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 three different ways to install a mini split. One one is where we meet, you know you cut a hole in your wall and and the outside is the condenser and the inside there's something that sits up you know right up against the wall usually uh, at a profile of about 30 inches off the ground. You see those in a lot of hotel rooms, for example. In other hotel rooms, you see a mini split high up on the wall, usually about three feet long, about a foot wide, typically white. They can be other colors too, but most typically white. And, and that, that uh, heat pump mini split is it's, the condenser outside has the miraculous ability. This is the, this is the piece of the technology that, that uh, ph physicists know better than I do. But, but remarkably in this type of environment where it's not too cold, not too hot in most of the, the of California, uh, a mini, uh, a heat pump is able to pull um, cold air out of hot air and able to pull hot air out of cold air, depending on what you need. It's rather like, how, what, huh? <laughs> you know, how is that possible? You know, it's all about molecules. And, and, uh, uh, and so, uh, a, so what you get with a mini split uh, air uh, conditioning uh, uh, piece of equipment is something that can both heat and cool. It, it can do either or. And, and so you, you get two for the price of one, if you will. If you, you know in the house I, that I currently live in, most of this house is, is, is just simply heated by a furnace. But, but as climate change is starting to impact our third story, we remodeled our attic a few years ago, uh, one of these days, I'm going to want a mini split up in that attic because I want it to be cooled off because it's starting, you know, it, especially this, this last fire season, it was getting a little bit uncomfortable up there. And so that, that heat pump gives us inexpensive hot air and an inexpensive cool air when we need it. 
Cool. So if somebody is building a project, they're pretty interested in what you just talked about. And they're like, all right, I, I need to look up going all electric. Is that something they just go to their contractor with? Or is, do they need a specialist? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, because of net zero construction, uh, as of January 1, 2020, what gets added to the team of, of people planning your ADU is an energy de design specialist. Uh, it's usually about a, a five to six hundred dollar exp expense where they look at the design that that uh, your designer or architect has put together for you and make sure that it meets net zero construction criteria that can be approved in your municipality and state. And and uh, and they would know often more than the, than the typical contractor about. Uh, how do I go all electric? There, there, it's a quick learning curve because we're forced to do it. So there's more and more contractors are, are, are having their first experience with all electric. So that, uh, yeah, in, the, in the past few months, but, but uh, so the, I would say probably 25% of contractors uh, uh, um, are, what's the word I'm looking for, are, uh, um, educated uh, about a, a comprehensive uh, all electric package and the other 75% aren't there yet. So you want to really ask, I'm not, I'm not suggest, suggesting, you know, don't select that contractor. I'm selecting, you may need to be the one that educates them on why you want a mini spit versus a, a, a wall, a wall uh, furnace or a baseboard uh, electric furnace. For one, either one of those will, will probably not allow your plans to be approved. Uh, so you might you might get you know the, the reckoning in that regard because they're just energy sucks. So so you may just it may just be the plan check person that says sorry this doesn't pass, but if you've done your homework and 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 know and you know tell I need to know let's talk about you know uh, heat pumps for for our water heating uh, our, our, our water heater and our mini split um, uh, ask the ask the the contractor, what they know about those two technologies uh, in terms of the heat pumps and ask them that you want to put heat pump, a heat pump water heater in a, in a heat pump uh, mini split, you know, in, in your ADU along with an induction stove. With those three things alone, uh, with the right amount of insulation, you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, meet the energy, energy design criteria. That's great. And so, so when you talk about submitting a plan, it's like that big plan set that you give to the city or the county. And there's like a page in there that's all about net zero. That's what people, when people talk about Title 24, yes. that's really what they're talking about is that net zero page. Yeah, there's, 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 two pa there's one or two pages of, of energy calculations. It, calcula it calculates out you know, how well insulated your walls are, how well sealed your, your windows are. Um, and, and, and then also your energy use. And, and uh, it's, it's a little bit like a, um, a cap and trade uh, uh, in terms of how you get to a number that they're willing to accept. Uh, so that there's certain things that, that give you, that you must do that give you like a, a, a zero number. Uh, like, in other words, that's okay because you're at zero, net zero. But 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 if you uh, if you splurge and say no, I have to have that I have to have that that gas stove. I don't care if it costs me four thousand dollars to put that that darn larger line in. I got to have a gas. Well, then 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 you've just lost probably two points in the equation. So where are you going to pick those other you know two uh, points up? Are you going to increase the thickness of your insulation? Or uh, there's ways to do it. There's ways to 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 to, to have a a negative energy event as long as you make it up somewhere else. And it could be then you just upsize from, from six um, solar panel panels to, to eight and that gives you that, you know, the two numbers you the the two numbers you lost over on the other side. So there are ways to to juggle that, but but you know again um, uh, it's it if you look at those main three energy uses uh, uh, and switching over to the, the more efficient ones, it's the easiest path forward to getting to net zero. Great. So if you've got an architect, they can they can figure out who your um, who's doing your energy calculations. 
And yes. plus they'll know their stuff. Yes. You've got a contractor, talk to them about those three appliances and go and see in their comfort level. And if they need to learn some, or if you need to educate some, that might be part of the learning curve on your project because build it in 2021, maybe three and four have, haven't done an all electric building yet. Is it yeah? And, uh, and then if it's, and if it, you're running in any walls, then, then do come, come bug me and I'll, I'll try to hook you up with some resources, but you should be able to do it with your existing team. Um, and, and a little bit of, a little bit of research. So that sounds like a plan. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it seems like a lot in, in some ways it is. Why? Because the, the, the building code for the entire state changed. The ADU code uh, for the entire state changed and the energy code for the entire state all changed and fell on January 1. So it can feel overwhelming, but there are some simple steps going forward. And we just talked about, you know, this, this one you know, key pathway forward. If you just start with that, with, with that path and those three uh, changes in, in, in your appliance selection, then you've just made your life easier. I love it. If, if people want to learn more about this stuff, about electrical and solar requirements and ADUs, I'll put some videos up here that they can watch. If they want to learn more about Rolf and, uh, and his, his business in the East Bay, there's some links in the description below. And I uh, really appreciate everybody's time watching today. Thank you. And thank you for coming on, Rolf. Uh, it's my pleasure, Ryan. You be well.